Get ready to explore the dark and dangerous world of female criminals, because today we're gonna get into the most wanted women in the world. These ladies have made names for themselves by committing some of the most heinous crimes imaginable, and some have managed to find themselves among the most notorious people on Earth. From the woman who's on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, to the jilted lover who turned to Here's the 20 most wanted women in the world. Number 20. Shanika S. Minor. First off, let's talk about Shanika S. Minor, the latest lady to join the FBI's 10 most wanted list. This lady allegedly killed a pregnant woman in Milwaukee who she felt had disrespected her family. You don't mess with Shanika's kin, folks. So, what happened? Well, apparently Shanika's mom mentioned to her neighbor that they'd been blasting music at all hours of the night. And you know what that means, right? It's time for a little chat with the neighbor, but the not-so-friendly kind. Shanika showed up packing heat, but when her mom rushed over to try and calm her down, Shanika decided to back off. Only problem was, she was left with a feeling of disrespect, and that's apparently a big no-no in her book. So, a week later, Shanika slipped into the neighbor's duplex and had a little run-in with the woman at her rear door. And by run-in, we mean Shanika sh her d Not exactly a shining example of conflict resolution, huh? And now she's on the FBI's most wanted list, which is basically like getting a massive F on your permanent record. So, moral of the story, folks? Don't mess with Shanika's family, or you might end up on a list you don't want to be on. Or, I guess, rather, don't people like Shanika did if you don't want to end up going to jail forever, which she will. I apologize to her family. Oh, and while we're at it, hit like and subscribe, or I'll use inside contacts with the G-Men to get you on America's Most Wanted. Time for the rare topic. So let's talk about this picture of a stunning woman who was apparently a model in Russia. But wait, there's more to this story than meets the eye. Rumor has it, this lovely lady isn't just a model, she's also a lord. Yeah. That's right, a kingpin. Or a queenpin, I guess. She's melting hearts, and she's also causing serious neurological damage with her d deals. But now she's on the run, and no one knows where she is. So, what do you think? Do you believe this internet story, or is it just another tall tale? And even if it is true, what do you think about a model turning a drug lord? Is that a career path that you would have ever considered? Let us know in the comments below. And hey, if you see this lady around, maybe let her know to stay clear of law enforcement. Uh, although I guess she probably already knows that. As always, comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19, Brenda Delgado. This is Brenda Delgado, a Mexican national who made headlines in 2015 for her alleged involvement in a murder case in Dallas. Turns out Brenda was a jilted lover who was not too pleased about her ex-boyfriend dating someone new. The lucky lady in question was Dr. Kendra Hatcher, a pediatric dentist who was dating Brenda's ex and had even been introduced to his parents. But apparently, Brenda was not happy about any of that. She allegedly hired hitmen to take Kendra out, and they carried out the m in the parking garage of Kendra's apartment complex. Talk about a dramatic love triangle, right? But Brenda's plan didn't quite work out. She was eventually caught and brought to justice. It just goes to show love can make people do some crazy things, but hiring hitmen? It's definitely never the answer. It's important to remember that jealousy and anger lead people down dark paths. All you gotta do is watch Star Wars. It's always best to seek help or talk things out, rather than resorting to violence. Number 18, Shantae L. Henderson. Shantae Henderson was a former member of the 12th Street Gang, a notorious criminal organization based in Kansas City. Henderson was wanted by the FBI for alleged involvement in multiple murders and a gang-related In 2006, she was arrested for shooting and a man outside of a convenience store in Kansas City. Before her arrest, Henderson was a feared figure in the Kansas City criminal underworld. Her involvement in the 12th Street Gang and her alleged role in multiple homicides and sh** had a serious impact on the community around her. Despite her criminal behavior, Henderson was able to evade capture for a period of time, and her status as a fugitive made her a target of law enforcement. Eventually, however, Henderson was captured and brought to trial. She was found guilty of and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
Her life serves as a reminder of the dangers of gang violence and the destructive nature of criminal behavior, and her story's been the subject of much media attention and speculation. Number 17. Bernadine Ray Dorn Ah, Bernadine Ray Dorn, the bombshell who took explosive personality a little bit too literally. This University of Chicago Law School grad found her calling as a leader in the Weather Underground, a group that was less about meteorology and more about stirring up a storm of civil unrest in the 70s. In 1970, Dorn went from weather woman to weather wanted, when she went into hiding after a townhouse in New York's Greenwich Village got an unwanted makeover, courtesy of her comrade's failed attempt at bomb making. You might call this a real estate nightmare. But hey, it's hard to stay on top of the most wanted list when you're a master of disguise, or in this case, when a district court judge gives you a hand. Just three years later, Judge Damon Keith tossed out the case against weathermen and women, citing the government's sneaky tactics to dig up dirt on the group. You could say the weather underground forecast called for a dismissal with a chance of freedom. Bernadine's love life heated up during her time underground, as she and fellow weatherman William C. Ayers decided to stop dodging the law and start dodging wedding rice instead. The dynamic duo resurfaced in 1980, and Dorn said, I do, to both her hubby and a guilty plea for aggravated battery and jumping bail. Love truly knows no bounds, or legal consequences, apparently. Number 16. Angela Yvonne Davis Get ready for a story that's got more twists than a pretzel factory. Introducing Angela Yvonne Davis, philosopher, professor, and part-time star of the FBI's watch list. In 1970, Davis got slapped with some serious charges. And but hold your horses, this isn't your typical whodunit. Now, you might think that to be charged with you'd have to be, you know, at the scene of the crime. But as the New York Times pointed out, that wasn't the case for our dear Professor Davis. Instead, she was charged under a California law that, in a nutshell, said, you brought the guns, now you're on the hook too. It's kind of like guilty by association, but specifically for bringing guns. So did Davis hunker down and face the music? Nope, she pulled a Houdini and evaded the police, earning herself a spot on the FBI's most wanted list. Sounds like a thriller movie in the making. I'll have popcorn ready. But seriously, this controversial case had people scratching their heads and asking, just how far can the long arm of the law reach? Can you imagine the uproar? Imagine being held responsible for what your coworker does with the stapler you'd lent him. Oh, except instead of a stapler, it's a thing you use to kill people. So uh, never mind, I guess I get it. Number 15, Marie Dean Arrington. Marie Dean Arrington, the lady who took breaking out to a whole new level. You see, our gal Marie had been locked up since 1968 for the not-so-gentle murder of Vivian June Ritter, a 37-year-old secretary who had a really, really bad day at the office when she met Arrington that day. Now, here's where the story gets twisted. Arrington had some beef with Florida public defender Bob Pierce, who did a less-than-stellar job defending her kids, her son for armed robbery, her daughter for fraud and forgery. So Marie decided it was time for a little payback. But when Arrington waltzed into Pierce's office, she found it emptier than your stomach after a juice cleanse. So she did the next, I'm using air quotes here, logical thing. Took the secretary hostage, pumped her full of lead, and then introduced her to the business end of Ritter's own car. And you thought your job sucked. This Bonnie minus Clyde caper was all part of a master plan to spring her son from his lifetime prison sentence. Spoiler alert, it didn't work, but hey, at least she got a spot on the FBI's most wanted list after busting out of prison in Marion County, Florida. Not exactly the kind of achievement you could put on a resume, but at least it's something? So folks, next time you're feeling down about your own family drama, just remember, at least you're not related to Marie Dean Arrington. Number 14, Ruth Eisman Shear. Let me tell you about Ruth Eisman Shear, the first woman to make it into the FBI's most wanted list. She didn't get there by jaywalking or littering, no siree. She earned her spot by kidnapping Barbara Jane Mackle with the help of a guy named Gary Stephen Christ. Now, Mackle's father was a big shot. He had a personal relationship with Richard Nixon and was rolling in cash from his land development business in Florida. So Chris thought, hey, let's kidnap his daughter and get a hefty ransom out of him. And that's exactly what they did. They snatched Mackle from an Atlanta motel room, buried her in a box one and a half feet underground, and kept her alive with an air pump, 
food, water, and a battery-powered lamp. It's kind of like a DIY kidnapping kit, but I'm pretty positive you wouldn't be able to find it at Home Depot. They demanded a cool 500k in $20 bills for her release, and you know what? They got it. Mackel was finally rescued 83 hours after her burial, and then Eisman, Shear, and Christ were caught and thrown in the slammer before they could get very far. Kids, what have we learned? Crime doesn't pay, unless you're talking about ransoms and the six figures, but seriously, don't do crimes. And if you do, don't bury people alive. That is just so not cool. Number 13, Ruha Ignatova. Moving on to our next topic, we have a real-life disappearing act. This is Ruha Ignatova, the 11th woman to make it onto the FBI's most wanted list. Ignatova allegedly scammed wealthy investors out of a whopping $4 billion in a classic Ponzi scheme under her company OneCoin. But here's the thing, after swindling all that dough, she just hopped on a plane and vanished into thin air in 2017. Seriously, poof, gone like a magician's assistant. Now, I don't want to speculate about where she went or what she's doing, but I'm imagining she's living it up on some tropical island, sipping fruity drinks with little umbrellas in them. Maybe she even started her own cryptocurrency, TwoCoin, and is running around with a new scheme as we speak. But in all seriousness, this woman allegedly ruined countless lives and caused financial devastation for many. So let's hope the FBI track her down and bring her to justice. And if you see someone suspiciously sipping fruity drinks on a tropical island, maybe give the authorities a little heads up. Number 12, Julianne Baldueza Dimitrion. Next up, let's talk about Julianne Baldueza Dimitrion, a real estate fraudster who used her victim's money to fund her lavish lifestyle. In February of 2010, Julianne and her husband John were indicted on mortgage fraud charges. They promised to invest the money of distressed homeowners who were in danger of losing their homes, but instead, they used that cash to fund their own extravagant lifestyle. And let me tell you, Julianne's investments were on point. According to the FBI, she splurged on expensive clothing, high-end lingerie, designer purses, and shoes. I mean, you can't scam people out of their homes without having a good shoe collection, am I right? But in all seriousness, this kind of fraud is no laughing matter. It's a despicable act that ruins people's lives and tears families apart. So it's good to hear that Julianne and her husband pleaded guilty and were brought to justice. Let's hope that their punishment serves as a warning to others who may be considering similar schemes. And if you ever come across someone promising you a too-good-to-be-true real estate deal, just remember Remember, expensive shoes are not a sound investment strategy. Number 11, Joanne Deborah Chesimard. Next up, Joanne Chesimard, a former Black Liberation Army member who's still on the run after escaping from prison. Chesimard was serving a life sentence for the 1973 execution style of police officer Werner Forrester on the New Jersey Turnpike. Chesimard's used a lot of aliases, but the one that most people know her by is Asata Shakur. Fun fact, she is, and, I, and this is real, the step-aunt of the late hip-hop artist Tupac Shakur. Chesimard was born in Queens, New York, but she grew up in North Carolina. She was an activist in college, and she even took on a leadership role in the Harlem branch of the Black Panther Party. But later on, she decided to join the Black Liberation Army. Now, I don't condone violence or but you gotta admit, Joanne Chesimard has a pretty cool origin story. She's like a real-life superhero, fighting for justice and taking on the man. But of, of course, murder is never the answer. It's been over 40 years since Chesimard escaped from prison, and she's still on the FBI's most wanted list. So if you happen to see a woman with a striking resemblance to Tupac's step aunt, you might want to call the authorities. Number 10, Josephine Sunshine Overacre. Now, let's talk about Josephine Sunshine Overraker, an alleged eco who was indicted for her involvement in The Family, a Pacific Northwest terrorist cell group. This group claimed to act in the name of the Animal Liberation Front and Earth Liberation Front, but let's be real, these are just fancy names for being a straight-up criminal. Overaker was charged with two conspiracy violations, including arson and destruction of an energy facility. Now, I may not have a degree in environmental science, but I'm pretty sure setting things on fire and blowing up energy plants is not the best way to save the planet. But hey, I get it. We all have passions. Some people want to save the whales, some people want to save the trees, other people like to blow stuff up. All jokes aside, is a serious crime, and it's important that those who commit these acts are held accountable for their actions. So let's just hope that justice is served in this case, and everyone involved can learn from their mistakes. And remember, there are plenty of ways to be environmentally conscious without breaking the law. So let's all do our part to save the planet in a legal, responsible, and safe manner. 
Number 9. Hazel Leota Head Here we have Hazel Leota Head, a woman with a history of moving around the country and marrying more men than I'm able to keep track of. And apparently, she's also wanted for According to the FBI, Head is wanted for the 1998 of a man in Benton, Louisiana. She allegedly shot him in the back of the head in his trailer. And I'm no relationship expert, but I feel like that might be a red flag. If your significant other has a habit of changing their name and moving across the country every few months, it might be time to reevaluate your choices. Apparently, Head would meet men through personal ads, hanging out at truck stops and traveling with drivers. So if you're out on the road and you see a woman with more aliases than you can count, you might want to just keep driving. The FBI has been after Head since 1990 when she was wanted by Nebraska law enforcement for burning down a boyfriend's trailer. The FBI cautions that she should be considered armed and dangerous, so let's hope they can catch her before she strikes again. And if you're looking for love, maybe try a dating app instead of hanging out at truck stops. It's just a suggestion. Number 8. Donna Joan Bora. Next up, we got Donna Bora, who's wanted in connection with a 1981 anti-apartheid demonstration that turned into a riot at the protest in Kennedy International Airport. Borup allegedly threw an acidic substance at a police officer, rendering him partially blind. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that's the most effective way to make a political statement. If you want to make a change, throwing acid at people is probably not the best approach, especially if they're not the people that you're trying to change in particular. At the time of her arrest, Borup was a member of the 19th Communist Organization, a splinter group of the Weathermen and the Marxist-Lenin Organization. These guys were all about armed revolution and violent overthrow of the US government. So, you know, pretty chill stuff. According to the FBI, Borup never showed up for her trial in May of 1982, and a warrant went out for her arrest. And if that wasn't enough, she's also had an unlawful flight to avoid prosecution warrant. So if you happen to see a woman throwing acid at people and advocating for the violent overthrow of the government, you might want to give the authorities a heads up. And remember, peaceful protests, those are always the way to go. Number 7. Amparo Hernandez Let's talk about Amparo Iris Hernandez and her son Eddie Vasquez, who were both wanted on charges of harboring illegal immigrants and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Hernandez is accused of operating brothels in southwest Florida, which is definitely not a legal business. And to make matters worse, some of the women who worked there were illegal immigrants who were forced into to pay off their debts to the people who smuggle them into the country. Taking advantage of people who need help like this, that's the lowest of lows. And even if it wasn't that exact situation, that's a pretty horrible way to treat your employees. I mean, what kind of benefits package would you offer someone who's being forced into Human trafficking is a serious crime, and it's important that those responsible are brought to justice. And let's not forget about the harboring of illegal immigrants. It's one thing to support immigration, it's another thing to break the law by harboring people who aren't supposed to be here and were brought here in pretty horrible violent means. So if you happen to see Hernandez or her son, Eddie Vasquez, you definitely should give the authorities a heads up. And let's hope they can catch these criminals and put an end to their illegal actions activities. Number 6. Andrea Dudla Let's talk about Andrea Dudla, also known as Esther Cathona, who's been on the run since 2012. Dudla fled after being sentenced to more than 15 years in jail for her involvement in dozens of financial-related crimes. Now, I'm no financial expert, but I'm pretty sure that creating fake companies and borrowing millions of dollars from banks is not legal. Dudla and her associates were believed to have created these fake companies in order to scam banks across Hungary out of millions and millions of dollars. That's one heck of a get-rich-quick scheme. It's been reported that Dudla's hiding out in Thailand, which is a pretty amazing place to hide if you ask me. It's warm, it's beautiful, they got some of the best food in the world. I mean, if you've been there, you'd want to go there too, on the run from the law or not. But let's not forget what Dudla did was illegal, and she should face the consequences of her actions. So if you happen to see someone who looks exactly like this, you might want to let the authorities know. Let's hope Dudla can learn from her mistakes and turn her life around. Maybe she can start a legit business instead of just creating fake ones. Just a thought. Number 5. Regina and Margaret de Francisco. Let's talk about Regina and Margaret de Francisco, two teenage girls who made national headlines for their involvement in the high profile of Regina's boyfriend, Oscar Velasquez, in Chicago in June of 2000. 
The two women allegedly lured Vasquez to their home in Pilsen, where he was shot to death and his body was wrapped in a tarp and set on fire. I'm not a therapist or a relationship expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you break up with someone. Following the de Francisco sisters became fugitives from justice, and they gained national notoriety after their story was broadcast on shows like Unsolved Mysteries and America's Most Wanted. But eventually, their run from the law came to an end. They were apprehended separately in 2002 and were each convicted of first degree murder in 2004. I don't know about you, but I feel like luring someone to your house and then setting them on fire is a pretty surefire way to ruin your life. And let's not forget about the pain that their actions caused Vasquez's family and loved ones. So if you're thinking about committing a crime, maybe just don't. And if you do, I would not recommend going on the run and getting yourself on national TV. It's just not a good look. Number four. Rosaline Mary Wallace. Let's talk about a case that's still unsolved. On February 17th of 1987, police in Toronto responded to an emergency call on Lakeshore Boulevard near Park Lawn Road. The victim was discovered inside a residence, suffering from medical trauma, and was transported to the hospital, but unfortunately died shortly after arrival. Now, there's a person out there who's wanted for manslaughter in this case. Her name is Rosaline Wallace, and the Toronto Police Service is asking for the community's help in locating her. I'm no detective, but it seems like if someone's wanted for manslaughter, they probably have some explaining to do. So, if you happen to know anything about Rosaline Wallace's whereabouts or have any information about this case, you might want to give the Toronto Police Service a call. And let's just hope that justice can be served for the victim and their loved ones, because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Number 3. Nadia Tolokonikova Next up, we have Nadia Tolokonikova the founder of a politically charged punk group, Pussy Riot, who's been named one of Russia's most wanted criminal suspects. Let's just say these women are not on the best terms with the Russian government. Which, by the way, who the hell is unless you're like an oligarchy or something? According to reports, her name was in the Russia's Interior Ministry's database of wanted individuals for unspecified criminal charges. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound too good, especially coming from Russia. It's worth noting that Tola Konikova is no stranger to controversy. Her band Pussy Riot gained international attention in 2012 after staging a performance in a Moscow cathedral that was critical of then-Russian President Vladimir Putin. But regardless of your political views, I think we can all agree that being on a most wanted list is a horrible situation to be in. This is one of the rare cases where we're not rooting for her to get caught and sent to jail, we're rooting for her to have her name cleared and be able to move on from this ordeal. And if you're ever in Russia and you want to live a quiet life, well, that's going to be tough if you're any sort of civil rights activist. Not, not that it's super easy in other places, but in Russia, especially hard. Number 2. Olesya Kritsova Staying in Russia, meet Olesya Kritsova, a 20-year-old Russian student who is currently under house arrest in Europe for an anti-war post on her Instagram. If that sounded absolutely, insanely ridiculous to you, hey, you're not alone. It does to anybody with a brain. I don't know what Russia's official definition of terrorism is, but it seems to me like criticizing a war on social media probably doesn't fit the bill. She was charged with terrorism after she criticized Russia's war in Ukraine on her Instagram account. And if that wasn't bad enough, her fellow students even denounced her to the authorities. Talk about betrayal. Krivtsova is now in Lithuania and on Moscow's list of most wanted criminals. It's worth noting that this is not the first time that Russia has been accused of cracking down on free speech and dissenting voices. Oh yeah, like that singer that we just talked about before this one. Again, one of the rare cases where we hope that she not only doesn't get caught, but that she's able to have her name cleared and is allowed freedom of speech and expression, and that it's respected. Because at the end of the day, what the heck do we have if we're literally not able to speak our minds? Number 1. Hildy Van Acker Let's talk about a woman who's been on the run for quite some time now. A woman by the name of Alexandra Van Acker. Van Acker was sentenced to life imprisonment for her role in the murder of the British businessman Mark John Mitchell in the Belgian coastal town of Dehan. The murder took place on May 23rd of 1996, and Van Acker and her boyfriend Jean-Claude Lacote were both found guilty of the But here's the thing, Van Acker has been on the run ever since. I don't mean like a few days or even a few weeks. We're talking over 25 years now. That is some serious dedication. 
I have a hard enough time remembering stuff like where I left my keys, let alone evading law enforcement for decades. But hey, I guess when you're facing a life sentence, you do what you gotta do. So if you happen to see Alexandra Van Acker out and about, you might want to give the authorities a heads up. After all, she's been on the run for quite some time now, and it's probably time for her to face the consequences of her actions. It's amazing how these women have managed to evade the law for so long, isn't it? Do you think they'll ever be caught? And which of these cases intrigued you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.